Hi and welcome. In this video we're going to be disassembling a Seiko NH35A. Uh, very similar to the 7S26 that it replaced, but with the added features of hacking and hand winding. So first of all we remove the oscillating weight by unscrewing the large centre bearing screw. And then the next step is to remove the automatic winding bridge which is secured by two screws. This then lifts away and the reduction wheel lifts away. And there you can see the driving cog underneath. At this point here I'm lifting the magic fingers or pole levers over the stop before unscrewing and removing the ratchet wheel as they rest on top of the ratchet wheel and can be damaged if they're left in place. And here I'm removing the balance cock. Ordinarily this would be the first component I removed after removing the automatic works. Um, but bearing in mind that this was a loose movement and ordinarily I would remove all of the automatic works while the watch was cased before uncasing it to disassemble the rest. So the balance unscrews and lifts away as you can see conventionally. And next I'm removing the main bridge which covers the barrel and the train of wheels and is secured by three screws. Once lifted away, remove the small circlip which holds the reduction wheel and pole levers in place and these are separated. You can see there's quite a quite an amount of Seiko's famous grey grease on there and it was used quite liberally throughout this movement which is a brand new movement which uh, didn't run particularly well and was received in a lot. And here you see a cover plate which has just been removed. This doesn't actually hold anything in place, it's merely a cover plate for the gears that you see there. And the small spring simply clips into place so that's just pushed out from the other side and that just provides spring tension to one of the gear wheels. Moving back to the movement, we remove the click and click spring which is a combined piece and then remove the barrel and the train of wheels before removing the center wheel bridge and the center wheel here I remove the balance bridge, uh, sorry the pallet fork bridge and the pallet fork. Then the escape wheel and at this point the centre wheel bridge followed by the centre wheel. I don't actually lift the centre wheel away just yet because it's still secured in place by the cannon pinion on the other side. We'll get to that momentarily. But here you can see the keyless works. Much like the 7S26, the keyless works are also on the movement side, the, um, the wheel train side, rather than the dial side as you would conventionally see. So the setting lever spring, the yoke with its combined spring, the clip
clutch and the winding pinion and then the setting lever are removed. And this leaves the hack or balance stop in place and you can see how that operates on its pivot and swings in to press against the balance rim and stop the balance. Moving on to the dial side, we remove the cover plate which is held by four equal length of the screws. This is the plate that holds the calendar ring in position. And with the four screws removed, it simply lifts away. Attached to this plate is a riveted brass gear and this along with the plastic gear actuates the rapid date change mechanism. And the part that I'm holding there with my tweezers would be the uh, rapid, uh, would be the day change jumper, the day uh, disc jumper had, um, if it had one fitted. Underneath this is the calendar wheel jumper which also forms the shape of a plate. The calendar ring is lifted away and then the date change wheel which is plastic. Very common for Seiko from the 7, 70 series onwards um, possibly even in fact even before that a lot of the movements used plastic uh, date wheels and then the hour wheel, minute wheel, and then the sliding rapid date change plastic gear, which simply just sits in a slot. Then the cannon pinion is removed. And you can see there that the center wheel is actually firmly glued in place with uh, lubrication. As I say, this was a brand new movement and it was acquired in a lot with uh, where somebody had bought it to create a modded watch and because it didn't run particularly well, they just put it back in its case, bought another movement. And the reason for initially for stripping this was to see if there was any notable fault and other than an excess of grease there wasn't anything particularly amiss and you will see once it goes back together in the follow-up video that the performance is actually very impressive on it so it seems that the problem was in fact just uh, a bit of overzealous lubrication and here is a series of gears which have a small cover plate held by two screws. This lifts away and then there are two gears on posts which are removable and one which is riveted in place and cannot be removed. Both similar looking but one is very thick and one is thin and you cannot put them back in the wrong place because one has a very deep post at the upper part of the screen there and one a very shallow one. There you see I just replaced the centre wheel to show how that fits back on the movement side. And then here is an additional spur gear which sits behind the winding pinion. At this point I'm refitting the balance in readiness for putting the movement through the cleaning machine. Interesting to note that the securing screw for the balance on these is incredibly long compared to your typical balance bridge screw.
and as a final point the plastic dial ring which snaps into place is teased away from the movement plate and it goes without saying that uh, the plastic components of course do not go through the cleaning solvents in the cleaning machine so that's the completion of the strip of the Seiko NH35 and the reassembly will be shown in the following video so thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video